Anyone outside Britain who isn't laughing at Britain hasn't been paying attention. Laughing in the way that people centuries ago used to laugh at the lunatics in the asylum. In case you're wondering, we're all sick and tired of hearing the word Brexit, so we're calling it independence, if only to remind ourselves that that's what we voted for nearly three years ago, and that's what our elected politicians are still determined to deny us. The only question now is, how long are we going to let them get away with it? There's no majority in Parliament for democracy, unfortunately, because our servants have decided that they are our masters. The people we elected to represent us have broken the social contract and stolen our birthright, and they've saddled our country with a broken Parliament that has lost the people's trust. A Parliament of charlatans, of proven liars, who campaigned to be elected on a core promise they knew they would break. A Parliament of political maggots, feeding on the carcass of British democracy. What plague will breed from this abomination if we don't stop it now? The behaviour of this House of Frauds illustrates why it's so important that all politicians are directly accountable to the people. This crooked Parliament will be somewhat accountable at the next election, and many of the MPs who have tried to sabotage our independence will lose their seats if there's any justice and never be heard from again. But the people who run the European Union are not accountable to anyone for anything they do, which is why we voted for independence as soon as we got the chance. We voted to elect our own leaders, control our own borders and make our own laws. It had nothing to do with any trade deal. Trade and other mutual arrangements, cultural, scientific and so on, can be agreed between sovereign nations without the need for anyone to give up their sovereignty. There's no reason for Europe to be ruled by a politburo of unaccountable career politicians in Brussels. It's a parasitical level of government that should not be there. The European Union exists to put that level of government there for the benefit of career politicians who don't want to be accountable to the plebs for their globalist open borders agenda because they know that the plebs would never vote for it, so the plebs need to be neutralised, which is what the European Union's function is, using trade as an excuse to superimpose itself politically over the nations of Europe to snuff out democracy whenever it tries to raise its head, as it has done several times and been ignored or overturned, and to kill the nation-state. It's vital to the European Union's survival that the nation-state is destroyed. A successful United Kingdom might encourage other countries to seek independence, so they're determined to make an example of us and to grind us under heel if they can so that other countries can see what happens to anyone who tries to leave. And our own politicians are complicit in this. It's only thanks to them that the European Union has any leverage at all, because this house of traitors, this house of fools that we call a parliament, and this stubborn, dishonest, useless prime minister and her bad faith cabinet of saboteurs and frauds have purposely made this process as tortuous as possible to wear us down, make us think it's all hopeless, and bully us into changing our minds because in common with the people who run the European Union, they want our country to be defeated. They want our country to disappear. All three establishment parties, the Conservative Party, the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrat rump of a party have shown that when push comes to shove, they cannot be trusted with our freedom. They have poisoned our politics and they have poisoned our society irreparably. A vote now for any of these parties is a dirty vote. It's a vote of complicity. And we know now, beyond any doubt, that it's a vote for the curse of globalism. All three of these parties are pulling in the same direction, despite what they may say in their manifestos. They're pulling us towards a progressive world of open borders that would be impossible to govern democratically, even if politicians wanted to, which they wouldn't. Such a government would quickly become an oligarchic dictatorship, like China is today, so remote from the people it governed that it might as well be sending directives from Mars, and it would be as politically corrupt as the United Nations is today, and with no means to change it, no vote for the people, no voice for the people, 
ever again, the world would effectively become a giant open prison, ideologically policed for community cohesion, under constant surveillance for security reasons, like China is today. We need strong borders and national sovereignty to keep us free. There is no other way. If we lose those things, we lose everything. And then our children and grandchildren will never know what it's like to live in a free society. And that will be our legacy. So the very worst thing that we could do right now is not to vote, as some people have suggested. You might say, well, what's the point of voting? They won't listen anyway. Oh, yes, they will. They'll listen when they get voted out. They'll be all ears then. And that's entirely up to us. We still have all the power here. All we got to do is use it. And use it, surely, this time, we must. This poisoned parliament has shown itself to be a moral and political sewer that urgently needs to be hosed clean with a strong jet of democracy. And the more votes it has behind it, the stronger it will be. Wherever you live in Britain, you'll find an independence candidate to vote for in the next election to send these people the message that they are our servants, not our masters. For what they have tried to do to us and for what they have done to our country, they need to be taught this lesson and they need to be taught it hard. Being governed by these people now would be like living with somebody who has tried to kill you. They are a serious, proven threat to our freedom and they should never be elected again. And vote too, if it comes to it, in the coming elections for the European Union's puppet parliament, which is full of people on fat pensions who are too well paid to cause any trouble. Vote to put people in that parliament who will cause trouble. The more trouble we can cause for the European Union, the sooner we'll be free. You know, this truly is a watershed moment, not just for Britain, but for the whole of Europe. If we can save our country from these political gangsters, other countries will be encouraged to leave, and then this illegitimate union that nobody has ever voted for will weaken and crumble. But if we allow independence to be stolen from us now, if we allow our country to be visibly defeated, Nobody else will put their head above the parapet. Democracy in Europe will wither on the vine and then it's only a matter of time before the entire continent, including Britain, is governed the way China is governed today. We will never get another chance to free our country from this tyranny. The political class will make sure of it. So in political terms, this is our battle of Britain. It's a battle that must be won whatever the cost.